Hello everybody. In this lesson, let's have a look at a very special process which we call as transpiration. Transpiration is basically a process in which the plant loses water. So to explain this, let's take an example of a maize plant. Do you know that a maize plant in an entire day, you know, absorbs around 5 liters of water? Now do you think that it requires that much of water or does it utilize that much of water? Well, no. You might be surprised to know that the plant, maize for example here, it basically, you know, eliminates almost 98% of this water. So this is a case with every other plant that they utilize hardly 2 to 3% of the water they absorb from the soil. Rest of the water, it gets eliminated. Now this elimination of water from the aerial surface of the plant in the form of water vapor is what you call transpiration. So we can say that transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapors from the exposed areas of plant. When I say the exposed areas of plant, I must tell you that this transpiration, it mainly occurs from the leaves and in the leaves also it mainly occurs through the stomata. So we have already learned about the structure of stomata. We have seen that it is a minute pore which is guarded by guard cells which regulates its closing and opening, right? Now moving forward, when we talk about the types of transpiration, we see that transpiration can be of different types depending upon the part from which the water has been lost, okay? So moving forward, let's have a look at the different types of transpiration on the basis of from which part this transpiration is taking place. So here we see the different types of transpiration. In these different types, the first one that we can observe in here is the lenticular transpiration. Now what is this lenticular one? Well, this type of transpiration, it takes place through with the help of lenticels. And these lenticels are nothing but the tiny pores which are present on the hard surface of plant. Of course, these hard surfaces have to be the aerial parts. So in old trees or all, we can say that these parts can be cork or bark. Similarly, in fruits, we can say that the dark, the hard surface they have, the outer one, it, it can be the lenticular part, okay. So here in these hard surfaces, they have minute pores and these are lenticels which help in the release of water in the form of water droplets. Next, when we talk about the percent, we see that they comprise 0.1 to 0.2 percent of the total transpiration which is almost negligible. Alright, next is that since they do not open or close, since they do not have any guard cells with them, so what we can say, we can say that the transpiration through lenticels can occur day and night. Alright, so this is the first type of transpiration. Next coming to the cuticular, we see that the transpiration in here occurs with the help of cuticle. Now what is cuticle? Well, the cuticle is the deposition which is formed by the combination of cutin and wax over the aerial surface. So for example, we can say the upper surface of the leaf, okay, the, if there occurs the cuticle, okay, then the transpiration occurs through this cuticle only. Now the percentage of transpiration which occurs through cuticle is around 3 to 10 of the total transpiration, okay. Next we see that the, this transpiration through cuticle, it depends very much upon this thickness. So. If I talk about the dry plants, meaning the desert plants, the xerophytes, what happens is that in these plants, we know that they have a modification in such a way that they have a thick cuticle. Now this thick cuticle would do what? It will avoid the rate of or the high rate of transpiration. So because of the thick cuticle, the transpiration rate will get very, very low. Whereas in the other condition, if we talk about hydrophytes, what would happen? They have thinner cuticle and hence the rate of transpiration can be more. Same thing happens in here as well that these do not have any kind of guard cells with them. So the transpiration can occur day and night through them. Alright. So this was the cuticular transpiration. We say that cuticular transpiration, although this deposition is inorganic. Cut. Repeating. Start. This deposition is non-living. But still we say that it is a type of transpiration because it is occurring on the living tissue, okay? So next is stomatal. Of course, we know that stomatal transpiration occurs with the help of stomata. 
we know that stomata are nothing but the tiny pores which are present on the green parts of the plant mainly we see that in a dicot leaf it is present on the lower surface okay next we see that the major chunk of the transpiration it occurs with the help of stomata only which is around 85 to 90% also we know that guard cells they are you know present in the stomatal apparatus which guards this minute opening so as per the opening and closing of guard cells this stom this stomata would open and close which would result in transpiration meaning that as we know the guard cells they open the stomata during the day time so we would observe that the transpiration through stomata occurs mainly during the day whereas since the guard cells close the stomata during the night time the transpiration hardly occurs during the night although we know that there is an exception of cam plants wherein the guard cells they open during the night time and they close during the day so this was about the three different types of transpiration in which you have observed that it can occur mainly with the help of stomata then with the help of cuticle and lastly with the help of lenticels so now when we can observe that major chunk of the water of the plant okay it has been basically transpired out so is it good for a plant or it is bad well it is both and that is why some of the scientists call this transpiration as unavoidable evil or necessary evil why am i calling it necessary what is the need of this transpiration so let's talk about some of the significance of transpiration well first of all as we have learned the transpiration is extremely important for the ascent of sap okay so for the water which is absorbed by the roots to transfer it to the aerial parts of the plant we see that ascent of sap take place and for this ascent of sap the transpirational pull is very 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 important so first use is ascent of sap second use when we talk we say that since plants do not contain blood and hence for the regulation of their body temperature the transpiration is important so like we sweat okay to make our body cool similarly the plants they give out the excess of water from their body so that they can keep themselves cool next is we would observe that because of transpiration the minerals they also get distributed in the plant also since the water because of the transpirational pull reaches the leaves it helps in the process of photosynthesis so you see that there are so many uses of transpiration but still it's an evil since it is basically giving out so much of water from the plant and in adverse conditions it may lead to the wilting or dying of the plant as well okay so this is why some of the scientists they have decided to build some anti transpirant what are these anti transpirants well these are those substances which lower down the rate of transpiration in plant and they are available in the form of gels foams or spray so what they do is basically when they are applied on the aerial parts of the plant they decrease the rate of transpiration which is good but if they are used for a longer time or if they are used oftenly we see that the plant's growth is also reduced of course it is so because the lower absorption of water would take place then so that is why we observe that there will be lesser growth of plant in case of you know frequent use of anti transpirants so this was about the transpiration and we have observed that transpiration requires a few very very important things in which the first one is the living cells okay the second is that the water should leave the plant in the form of water vapor but you know there is one more process in which the water leaves the plant in the form of water droplets and this is what you call guttation so we see that guttation is a process in which the water is given out of the plant in the form of water droplets and this guttation it takes place through some pores which are present on the margins of the leaf and we call them hydathodes so hydathodes are present on the margin of the leaf and these cells are achlorophyllous meaning they are colorless okay and in this guttation we see that the water loses from the plant in the form of water droplet so the main difference between the transpiration and guttation is of course from the place that it takes place the guttation takes place from the hydathod we have seen that the transpiration can occur with the help of lenticels cuticle or stomata also in transpiration we see that the water leaves in the form of water vapor always whereas whenever it is taking place in the form of water droplet we will call it guttation so this was about the transpiration 
when we talk about the different factors which affect the transpiration we know that mainly these are the factors which affect the opening and closing of stomata so this can be mainly temperature it can be we can say wind velocity humidity etc so all these affects the rate of transpiration so this was about the process in which we have learned what is transpiration its different types its significance and the difference between the guttation and transpiration also some of the factors which affect transpiration